Hi, I'm Tom from Tektronix Performance Oscilloscopes. And I'm Mike from Product Development Team. We're here to talk about asynchronous time interleaving, also known as ATI. It's our latest patented technology for high-speed signal acquisition. We're going to talk today about how it works and demonstrate some of the advantages that it has over older technologies that people have been using to get to high-frequency uh, digitizing. So we're going to start by looking at the block diagrams here that show our ATI technology, that's the top diagram, uh, compared with the legacy frequency interleaving process. Uh, you can see pretty easily there's some big differences. The first difference is our process uses two symmetrical paths that are essentially identical and have the same performance. The legacy process has two separate paths one of which is a straight path over to the A to D. The other is a path that involves moving the signal frequencies down into a range where the A to Ds can directly digitize. So we've got the two halves directly digitized or down converted and digitized. And when we put those back together, that results in a couple of problems. The first problem occurs when you try to fit those two halves back together. You have to understand um, where they started and where they were split, make sure that that matches up. And the components, the, the high frequency components that went through the down converting process have gone through some additional stages that can lead to harmonic distortion or other uh, changes in the, in the frequency uh, response that mean that matching the, the high frequency half and the lower frequency half could be a big challenge. The second problem you run into is that you've had one A to D system digitize half of the signal, another A to D system digitize the other half of the signal. So when you put those together, you've got one whole signal, but you also have the noise, the baseline noise from two separate A to D systems because it's, you need both of those halves to reconstruct the whole signal. So you essentially have twice as much noise as you would have uh, it was, was really in the signal. So to compare the, frequent, the legacy frequency interleaving to the new ATI from Tektronix, I'm going to turn it over to Mike to talk about ATI technology. When you look at the block diagram for ATI, you see it's completely symmetric architecture. The input power is alternately sampled and distributed to two identical copies of the digitizing system. And this symmetry creates a system that is much easier to calibrate, has fewer differential effects uh, on both sides. The other advantage is that because all of the signal power is distributed to both halves, in the end, in reconstruction, you're essentially averaging two copies of the signal, which results in a noise advantage, a noise reduction. And so the symmetric ATI architecture has some inherent advantages over legacy techniques. Let's take a look at a simple example of how uh, ATI works. Let's take a single frequency at 60 gigahertz, a 60 gigahertz carrier and apply it to a mixer uh, with a 75 gigahertz mixing reference. Uh, this creates um, images of the signal at 75 minus 60 gigahertz, 15 gigahertz, and 75 plus uh, 60 gigahertz, or 135 gigahertz. So these are heterodynes, and uh, this is a common technique for downshifting signals and, and the baseband. ATI technology uses a sampler rather than a mixer, and the sampler is strobed at 75 gigahertz clock frequency. This has a similar effect of, of downshifting uh, signals into uh, a lower band or alternately upshifting them, uh, similar to the effect of a mixer, but with a slightly different technique. So let's take a look at an ATI example with two carrier frequencies, one at 25 gigahertz, which is in the base band, and one at 60 gigahertz, was in the, which is in the upper band. Um, in this example, if we take a look at the sum and difference frequencies that arrive from a 75 gigahertz sampling rate, um, we see a, a 15 gigahertz image created from 60 gigahertz, and we see a 50 gigahertz image created from the, the 25 gigahertz carrier frequency. There are also upper band uh, sum frequencies that are well beyond the bandwidth of the system of 100 gigahertz and 135 gigahertz that are really of no consequence. Um, but it, as you can see, 
the effect of the ATI uh, sampling system is to fold the signal in half, fold all of the signal energy in half, about 37.5 gigahertz, the midway point of that 75 gigahertz frequency. Okay, so if we look at the final stage of ATI reconstruction, we have two copies of the full spectrum. One side, the components are all in phase. The other half had phase inverted. And so now we've got two copies we're going to add back together. And the, one of the elegant features of ATI is that these intermediate components that we don't want in the final result automatically cancel out because they're 180 degrees out of phase. And the components that we, that are real signal, signal components, add constructively. And so we get a 2x opportunity that we can then reduce through division by two, or essentially averaging, which reduces the overall noise. So we get this cancellation of, of components that are unnecessary, and we get the additive value that we can then gain a noise advantage. And that's the elegant aspect of ATI architecture. So we're really excited about the advantages of ATI, the noise reduction from having two copies added together and divided by two, plus the symmetrical path leading to higher fidelity because they match and produce the same signal uh, in two copies. And the benefit there is that customers get the best signal acquisition for the truest picture of your real signal.